Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over lesson 6.4 on distributing with polynomials. Our essential question is how do you use the distributive property to multiply a monomial by a polynomial? We've all used the distributive property before. A lot of times you saw something like 5 parenthesis 3x minus 7. And by the distributive property, you just multiply that 5 on through and take each term inside the parentheses multiplied by 5, the monomial on the outside. So that would make, you know, 15x minus 35. Well, today we're going to use that distributive property as well, but we're going to involve more variables. So what if instead of a 5 on the outside of the parentheses, what if we had a 5x squared times 3x minus 7? Well, this video is going to teach you how to multiply polynomials like that. Before we get into the examples, we need to review a property of exponents. When you take something like x to the third times x to the fourth, by definition, x to the third means x multiplied by itself three times. And x to the fourth means x multiplied by itself four times. So the exponent just tells me how many x's there are. Well, if we combine these two together, the 3 here and the 4 there, that makes a total of x to the 7th. Now, a way we could arrive at that answer really fast is just to take 3 plus 4 and add that up to make 7. Well, the product of a power rule does this just that. When you're multiplying two powers with the same base, you can add the exponents together so that x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the m plus n, where m and n are both integers. So you won't see any decimals here. They'll always be integers, whole numbers. Now that we've reviewed that property, let's practice some examples. We're going to start by just multiplying two monomials together. Remember that a monomial has just one part. So 4 is a monomial and 3x is a monomial. When you're multiplying monomials, you're going to multiply the numbers like normal. And then for the variables, you're going to use that exponent rule that we just talked about where we add the exponents together. So for this first example here, part a, I have just a 4 and I have a 3, so I'm going to multiply the numbers and then my x is going to Stay is just an x. So we multiply the numbers like normal. 4 times 3 is 12. And then for the variable, if there's more than one variable, we'll use our exponent property. This next one has two variables. So again, I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to start with my negative 2 times 14, the number multiplied with the number. And then I have my variable multiplied with my variable. And remember that an x is the same as x to the first. So when I multiply an x to the first times an x to the first, if I use my exponent rule, 1 plus 1 makes 2. So x times x is x squared. And then negative 2 times 14 is negative 28. So our final answer is negative 28x squared. So again, essentially what we're doing is we are multiplying the numbers and we're adding the exponents on our variables. Let's try another one. 3x squared times negative 2x. Remember, I'm going to take my numbers and multiply those together. So 3 times negative 2. And then I'm going to take my variables and multiply those together. So x to the second times an x, which is the same as x to the first. Now, for the numbers, you just multiply those like normal. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then if I use my exponent rule here, if I add 1 and 2 together, or 2 plus 1, we get x to the third. So the product of those two monomials would be negative 6x to the third. This last example here doesn't have a number in front of the second term. So that remember, that's just like a 1x to the fourth. So when I'm multiplying these together, don't feel like you have to regroup them like I've done. You're going to come to a point where you're comfortable enough just going straight from here to the answer and saying, well, i got to multiply my numbers. Negative 2 times 14 makes negative 28. Then I have to multiply my variables. x times x makes x squared. So here, if we do that, 
negative 7 times 1 is just, you know, negative 7. And then if we use our exponent rule, x to the third times x to the fourth, we add 3 and 4 together, and that's 7. So our final answer is negative 7 x to the seventh. Here is a try now problem for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause this video and give these problems a try. Please pause your video now. All right, here are your answers for problem number one. You should have done negative six times four, which is negative 24. And then if we use our product of a power rule and we add two plus three, we get an X to the fifth. Number two, five times three makes 15. And an X times an X to the third makes an X to the fourth. Remember that an X is the same as X to the first. And then the last one, number three, if you do negative four times two, that makes negative eight. And then x to the third times x to the fifth, we add those exponents together to get x to the eighth. Now that we've practiced multiplying monomials together, we're ready to use the distributive property to multiply a monomial by a trinomial. We want to make sure that our answers are written in standard form. So before you even multiply anything together, check that the polynomial has the terms in standard form. This one's good x squared plus 3x minus 4 is in standard form, so we can just go right to the distributive property. For the first step, we're going to take negative 4x to the third times x squared, and that makes negative 4x to the 3 plus 2, so x to the fifth. Then if I distribute my next term, that's negative 4x cubed times 3x, which would be negative 12, and then x to the third times x makes x to the fourth. And then lastly here, if we take negative four x to the third and we multiply that by negative four, the negative times the negative makes a positive, so positive 16 x to the third. And that is your final answer. Now it's okay if you're comfortable going straight from here to here it's fine to skip that step where I wrote it all out. It's fine to just say, okay, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. x to the 3rd times x to the 2nd is x to the 5th. Then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And x to the 3rd times x to the 1st is x to the 4th. So what you're really doing when you're doing this is you're doing the distributive property where you multiply the numbers together like normal and then you use the product of a power rule so that you add the exponents together on the variables. This next one, I'm going to use the shortcut and just go straight from the distributive property to the answer. However, before we do that, notice how that first polynomial or there isn't written in standard form. I need to switch the terms around so the biggest exponent comes first. So I'm going to put 5x to the fourth first, then the 2x to the third, and then the minus 7 on the end. Also, multiplying by 5x, I like to distribute with the number outside the front of the parentheses. It totally works to just, you know, distribute this way. But I think it's easier if you just put the 5x over on this side. And remember that a 5x is the same as 5x to the first. So now if we use our distributed property, we're going to multiply the numbers. So 5 times 5, 25. And then we'll add the exponents on the variables. x to the first times x to the fourth, 1 plus 4 makes 5. Then 5 times 2 makes 10. And x to the first times x to the third is x to the fourth, 1 plus 3 makes 4. And finally, if we distribute the 5x times the negative 7, 5 times negative 7 is negative 35, and then my x doesn't have any other x's to go with, so it just stays as an x. And that's our answer written in standard form. Here's one more example, but this time we need to do the distributive property twice. You're going to start by multiplying and then combining the like terms. And again, we'll write our answer in standard form. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the three outside the first parentheses. So three times x squared would be three x squared. And three times negative four is negative 12. Then move on to the second set of parentheses where you do negative five times x. So negative five x, that negative gets distributed through as well. And then negative five times two is negative 10. Now for our final answer though, we wanna make sure that we have it in standard form and that we combine our like terms. You can see that the biggest exponent here is the x squared. So three x squared comes first. Then we have this minus five x. And then we can combine the like terms with the two constants. If you take negative 12 and you subtract 10 from that, you get negative 22. Those are like terms. So when you're doing a distributive property twice, you have to combine the like terms together. The negative 12 plus the negative 10 adds to negative 22. So that makes our final answer 3x squared minus 5x minus 22. Here's a quick try now for you to try on your own. Use the distributive property to simplify these expressions and make sure that your final answer is written in standard form. Please pause your video now and give this problem a try. Here are your answers. This first one should be negative two x to the fourth minus six x to the third. Remember this x is the same as x to the first and two plus one makes three. And finally, x, negative two x squared times four is negative eight x squared. So this here is your answer. The other one here, if we take negative four x and we multiply that by two x squared, that makes negative eight x to the third. Remember that x has an x to the first on it. If we do negative four x times negative three x, the negative times the negative makes a positive 12. And then x to the first times another x to the first is x squared. And then lastly, we have negative four x times five, which is negative 20 x. So this concludes lesson 6.4 on distributing with polynomials. Good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.